blessing good day to everyone a pleasant blessing good day to everyone I am Umar Muhammad Second Sanjad Olaiwala Omakihinda Rishakunola Neville Angelo Scott many other names and that's me As we all know, today is the 10th of the 10th, 2021. The Chinese call today double 10. The Chinese call this day double 10. They celebrate double 10. And double ten is about the celebration of the Chinese National Day in the Republic of China, commemorating the start of the Wuchang Uprising of the 10th of the 10th, 1911. So, congratulations. To the Chinese people, all young, and they should be proud of themselves because they have contributed a lot to society. In some ways, I don't like some of the contribution the plastic rice and the dog meat and the anything they're eating. But all in all, we celebrate double ten today. But that is not the topic. The topic that I want to talk about, and let me say something before I talk about this topic, eh? because I know how human nature is when it does not overstand or humbles itself to say, well, yes. Or to say no. My people, ever since I was small, I've been on a journey. And while on that journey, I've been spoken to by people, by voices. Sometimes I distinctly hear the voices, sometimes I distinctly get the protection, and sometimes again. I have to be in tune. And that is why today I have never touched a cigarette in the sense of smoking. Because when I pick up a cigarette, they told me they say, No, that's not for you. And those that had anchor special cigarette. I was about six, seven years, seven years, seeing my father smoking. And today, I am 73, going on 74. And seeing in those days that my father smoking and wanted to know what smoking was all about, or what it's all about, curiosity, and I was told, uh -uh, don't do that. Go to the library. I went to the library and I investigated about smoking and they showed me a book with some plastic pages, the lungs, how it is being damaged by smoking and so on. So, not all of the things, but many of the things that I did was true inspiration, divine inspiration. Sex, hard work, laughter, joy, getting vexed, getting angry, doing wrong things, not willfully, but you know, sometimes you get angry and you do wrong things. It's not wrong things in the sense that you're, you're taking people money or you're damaging people. But you know, as, the, as you usually use the word, you're a naughty little boy. But all in all, it was a, a learning experience and it's, it is still a learning experience. 
But the more you live, the more you see, the more you know. I remember I was a staunch Catholic, a member of the Legion of Mary, and I saw, I went in the store, a bookstore, and I saw a book. I cannot remember the name of the book, but I know the author of the book, the person who wrote the book was named Loxam Rampa. Those of you all who are old like me, and that is why I mentioned my age, will, if you all can remember, Loxam Rampa. Is Loxam or Lux, Loxam Rampa? And he had a series of books. I read one, and that turned me on, so I kept on reading and reading and reading. Lok Mampa was a, a, a Tibetan, a Tibetan, however you pronounce it, a monk from, a, I think, from some Himalaya mountains or something. So. And I read that book. I also went back to the book, so I got a book, The Science of Breath. I lent out that book and I never got it back. I was a teenager at that time. Because I was searching. I was on a journey. Then I got into yoga. Cleansing breath. Different kinds of breath. Inhaling and, and exhaling. Prana. Today, I know that the second, the prana, or the life force and I kept on going and going and going until I met one day I was coming down the hill in low place and this is the who well I was involved in the 1970 uprising as a supporter so this sister she saw me with my dashiki on and thing I don't know, 97th, I was about 22 years at that time. And she said, here is a man I would like you to meet. Because she heard me talking already. And she knew, or she knew that I was searching. I was a, a Muslim at that time. Yes, yes, I was a Muslim. And when I looked at the man, I took the address of the man. And after communicating with him on the phone, one day when I went home, my mother told me, she said, there were three Muslim brothers here too. They spoke to me and so on. They're going up the hill. Well, I was so excited. I ran up the hill. I went up by the sister by the name of Ogaro. I met the three brothers up there on Lamental Road. And we started the Ansaru Allah group, community, Nubian Islamic Hebrew. Love until, love until here we come. There is where it all started. And today, it has graduated or developed into Nuwapian, Sabians. No more is he called Imam Isha, but Panabab, Baba Yanun. All because I was searching. I still know him today as Baba Yanun. All because I was searching. And while on my search, as a little boy, they used to call me mad scientist, professor. One of my friends from long ago still meet me and they call me professor. Because of the things I used to talk about, the things I used to go on the block and talk about, the constructive things, the mysterious things. I used to listen, I used to go to lectures, go in the town hall, go in the, the library. So that, that's me, that's the kind of person I was, that's the kind of person I am. And I continue to be that kind of person. Because I tried to fit in.
to the smoking. They say, no, that is not for you. I couldn't fit into it. I couldn't feel comfortable. I tried to fit in in the sexual life and the bloody back and I I couldn't feel comfortable. Sometimes I ask myself, but why, why, why are you not like them? Why are you don't go down the road lying, drinking? Uh -uh. I just couldn't feel comfortable. They said, that is not for you. And if I should ever force myself to fit in, I'd be punished severely. Because I didn't come here for that. I'm telling all you. Every one of us come here for a purpose. And we must live the purpose. So if I say I couldn't fit in in cigarette smoking, I don't want to say, well, look, and go to hell with that. Because my friends smoke, I smoke. No, I'm not living the purpose that I was sent here for. But many of us do not live the purpose that we are sent here for. And then we see other people living their purpose. We get jealous of them. And we want to destroy them. Who job bless? No man curse. So what I'm doing today, just to remind some of you all who don't know, I'm not doing this now. I'm doing this a long time. This is called me preacher. My father was a preacher. My grandfather, my father's side, an Orisha priest. My father was a Baptist leader. He was a preacher. So it's in the DNA. It's in my blood. It's in the blood of my children. Check out my children's life and see what's happening. So here I am today, and I'm going to talk about life. But before I talk about life, don't forget today is double tenant. Let me sort it for you. That every month, I take the double dates, the number of the double dates, and I try to get something out of it. So today is double ten. So you have 10, 10, 20, 21. The 10th of the 10th, 2021. And as I always say, if you go down to the smallest number, to multiply by each of these numbers without leaving a remainder, 3 cannot go because 3 into 10, I mean, that 3 into 20, it can only go to 21. So 3 into 21 is 7, so we get the 7 days here. I'm going to shorten it up. Eh? Right. How many sets of number you have in 10, 10, 20, 21? You have four sets of number. 10, 10, 20, 21. That's four weeks in a month. Or if you want, you can say 10 and 10 is 20. That is the 10th of the 10th. And then you have 20, 21. So if you take the smallest number that, that, that can go in the majority of these numbers without leaving any number, it's five. Right, and the common number there is 25 and 24 four weeks. Then you have 20, 21. And if you take 21 and you add it to one of the 10 of the 10, you get 31. So 31 days in the month of October. So that's it. As I said before, numbers play a very important part, and we have to learn how to work with them, we have to learn how to, to deal with them within our mind, within our everyday activity, numbers. Are very important so getting back to the topic if one should ask you what is life life is life now to the average Christian to the average stupidity the average fool the average is incomplete because all of us were programmed to be fools and incomplete eh? from the slave days before the slave days, we were intelligent. We were masters and kings and queens. Someone may want to ask the question, well, if we were kings and queens, how come they took us as slaves and we civilized them and so on? Let me tell you something. Everything in life has a rise and a fall. The Roman Empire, German, America, United Kingdom. And one of the reasons why everything falls in life, a rise and a fall, it is because of Judas's. It is because of deceitfulness. It is because of internal fighting, internal jealousy. It is because of greed. Man want money, so he sell out his own people. 
So after we've been kings and queens and so on, somebody did something. Because let's face facts. A powerful place like Africa, Egypt and all those is spiritually powerful. How come? These Canaanites who resided in the Caucasus mountain, who were uncivilized, how come they invaded us in our territory and enslaved us? You see, people have to be very wise. We have to look at the word subliminal. People, people could come to you, they could laugh and talk to you and, and pretend to be a friend. But your best friend could be a worse enemy, and that is one of the things that really put us in this position this day, that slavery position. We were too much of a loving people, ready to accept people, to be kind-hearted to them and welcoming them. And what they did, they undermined our kindness, they took our kindness for weakness. And here we are to today, struggling. Black Lives Matter. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. So it wasn't really a sellout. I just mentioned a sellout because many times in life people have been sold out by their own people. Because the Chinese, they had North Vietnamese against South Vietnamese. The Indians fought against themselves. The Chinese fought against themselves. So, so it's a natural thing in life. The white people fought against themselves. The Caucasian people. World War One, World War Two. So if one should ask, what is life? Maya says that life is creation. So therefore, there is nothing that is dead. There is nothing that was created dead. If the creator created anything dead, that wasn't a creator. That was a destroyer. A creator creates everything that is life. A creator creates life, not death. So therefore the stone is life. The concrete is life. The iron is life. But what makes the difference between the iron and human being and other things that move about is that the stone don't move, the iron don't move because they are vibrating on a level that is not in tandem, not in sync, or does not synchronize with our level of vibration. That is why when you spin the bicycle wheel and it spins fast, it starts to vibrate fast and it goes along, you can't see the spokes. The spokes become dead, it comes like nothing there, but should you put your finger, it could be damaged. Not until the bicycle is closed down, then we can see the spokes. So there are things today that we are watching out and we cannot see it moving, but it's moving. It's vibrating. It's feeling our vibration. We were given dominion over all living things, but we spoiled that. And that is why we cannot apprehend the stone, the bees. They're living better than us. That's why we cannot understand what the dog is saying when the dog barks, what the bird is saying when they whistle, what the cat is saying when it meows. So creation is life. And why I mention that is because there is a part in the scriptures that says, and I want the Muslim to listen to this, Thou shall have no other God but me. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven things, nor the likeness of anything that is in the water. Or how do we go again? That is in the heavens or in the water under the sea. Anything. Thou shalt not adore them nor serve them. If the Muslims here bow down before a statue, they say that is wrong because that statue has no life. And you cannot give it life. Why think that the Muslim is wrong? 
The Muslim is wrong. Yeah. Everything that was created was created with life. Who are you to say that it hasn't life? Man came into this world with common sense. The common sense was developed into a culture. The culture was developed into a science. And that is why today we have the science of the earth geography, the science of the human body, biology. Ology is the science of the study. Then you have geometry. As it says here, I think, let me see what I, I took it down. The word geo comes from the Greek word meaning the study of physical, the study of life, nature, and so on. So everything has life. The statue has life. The wood has life. Everything has life. And man bows down to it. And man prays to it because man knows that his dominion is down low. It has gone down. It is not high up. And in order to come back his, to, to his dominion, he has to understand the science of molecules and proteins and neutrons and atoms. Because everything vibrates. And it, it vibrates in a circumference. Atoms and protons. Everything consists of atoms and protons and neutrons and so on. And these are the things that give everything life. The life force, the second, the prana, as the Hindus will see, the life force. The life force of the stone, the life force of the iron, the life force of the earth. So therefore, man, by a man born down to a statue and painted the statue, he isn't doing anything wrong. He is just trying to get himself back online with that life force. He is trying to sink himself, to synchronize himself with that life force. Because he is part of that life force. He is part of the concrete, he is part of the wood, he is part of the stone. He was created from the earth. He was created with water and heat in his body, with oxygen. He is stone. He is iron. He is copper. He is zinc. He is potassium. That is what our body needs. You see, if you take a rusty nail and you put it in some water and you drink it, it's medicine. Copper, potassium, zinc, all these things combined together gives you stone and rocks and so on. That's why a long time we used to go outside and we used to take dirt and eat it. We don't know why we used to eat dirt. The earth contains the vitamins, the minerals, the proteins. The sea lives rest on the earth because the sea cannot be the sea. The ocean cannot be the ocean if it doesn't rest on the earth. If the ocean dries up, what will you see? You will see the earth. And out of that earth in the water, you get so many different things. Sea moss. Seaweed, so many different nourishment from the sea. 
that the fish is feed on, the omega tree. So to say that the wood has no life, the stone has no life, you are wrong. It has life. It has life. We're supposed to be commanding the stone, the wood, everything. The wood came from the tree, the sea, the stone. Come from nature, but it comes from a meteorite. It's come from nature. And everything in nature has life. The, the, the Almighty never created anything without life. So it is man's duty to align himself with what he thinks is dead and is alive so that he can make use of good use of it. Because the stone here was put for a purpose of man, the rock was put for a purpose of man, the iron, the steel, everything. And in order to overstand that purpose, you have to align yourself with it, Muslim man. You have to touch it, you have to feel it. You have to align yourself with its vibration. So much so that if you can align yourself with the vibration of the wall, you'll be able to walk through walls. Just like how the, the TV waves aligning itself with, with, the, with the wall, it passes through the wall because when you're in the room and you lock up and you're watching the TV, vibration comes in. So to say that those are not adored them or save them, it is wrong. That is life too. We must adore life. Just as how we adore the cat, we adore the trees, we adore the fruits, we love them, the nice flowers and so on. We have to adore these things too. Why leave them out and say they are not living? Do, do, do they bow down before them? Why? Why? They are living. They need to have our attention. Because they are here for a purpose. That is why we have the wooden bench. We have the trees. We have the wooden houses. We make things out of iron, out of steel. So they serve us and we have to serve them. Simple as that. Those are not adore them nor serve them. That's wrong. Thou shalt not make to thyself any great thing. There is nothing that man would make and his grave. You know what is grave? A grave object is an object that is dead. The Almighty never created anything grave. We make it grave because we think it's dead and we mistreat it and we spoil it and we contaminate it. But it's not grave. To dig a hole and put something in it, that's grave. But the earth is not grave because when you dig a hole and plant a seed, there is where it gets all the life from to sprout up. So the earth is not given. There is nothing that is given. We make things given. When you dig a hole and you put a dead body down in it, it is not given. It is still continues to transform itself from one life to the next life. So if you go down there, about three days after, you will see worms. Because energy cannot be destroyed. It can only transform itself from one form to the next form. So thou shalt not make to thyself any great thing or the likeness of anything that is in the heavens above and the earth beneath. Nonsense. Everything that was created in the heavens above and the earth beneath contains life. Then we have to think about the four elements of the earth. Fire, water, air and earth. So, there's another part of the scriptures that say, the breath of life was breathed into man, into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. Nonsense. To use the word became, became, means to say that that soul was not living before. So that when the breath of life was breathed into man, man became a living soul. The soul was always living, even before it entered man. So to say it became, it's wrong. To say the soul became, 
That means a soul that a soul was not as how it was. So it had to become a living soul. The word soul there was placed in the wrong way. King James and all are to be. Like I always say, they say buy cat and bag. When, when, when you believe in nonsense, or you, you know, somebody fool you, you buying cat and bag. But this is more than cat, this is bull. You ever hear about a bull? A mad bull? We buying bull in bag. Buy bull. Buy bull. Not buy bull, buy bull. Because he believed in a certain bull that was printed in that book in the English language. Now we can decipher it, but it takes somebody who knows the truth to come back and say what is the lie in it? What is the misconception in it? What is the distortion in it? So the word soul is in the wrong place. Man, the breath of life was breathed into man and he became a living entity. Or he became a human, a, a living being, a human being. Because just the matter that the Almighty created man's body there out of earth, according to how we imagine the story that they told us. And that earth was dead, it wasn't dead, because the earth is alive. The earth isn't dead. The earth is alive. Mother Earth, the earth is a woman. The earth can be impregnated by the heat of the sun and the rain and, and it follows right through because a woman could be impregnated by the heat of the man and the water that gushes out of his body. So the earth can be impregnated by the sun, by the thunder. You know when a man climaxes when he has been said, oh, noise for so boy, however he wanted to go. And then the water gushes forth. That represents the rainwater, the heat that makes him get hot. You know, when I, before you have sex, you have to get hot. And the needle rises up. You see, this is the needle. You look in the can, you see the needle. The thermometer. See when it gets heated. And it rises up to a point. And when it gets cool, it goes back down. You know, there's a joke. But when a man gets hot, some men, they like macaroni, they get soft. It's all part of sexual education. You must have heat in your body to have sex. You can't have such sex and feeling cold. And when that heat climaxes in your body, you make a noise like the thunder, you roar like the thunder. The water comes down, and if anyone who is spiritual enough to see the light that emanates or comes out from the man's body when he reaches a climax and he roars and he, he, he discharges into the woman, there's a light. Because his body reaches a climax of vibration, the climax of, of, of current. Because the human body has current. You're going to you live with your shoulder somewhere around here or so, and you feel the current when it runs through your body. Your body has a magnetic field. Your body has a magnetic field, especially the black man, the African man. Because this year, this year that we have here, as I always say, you see, when I call this thing, some people are ashamed of themselves, they don't want to admit certain things, and some people don't like to, so they say it's racist. And this, you see this? Look. This could stand up here. You know why that could stand up there? Because it is charged with electricity. If it is not charged, it falls down. So if I do that, you see, it stands up. It is electronically charged. It has the magnetic field of vibration in it. It is charged up. And why it does not go down? Because 
It is it, it is curly. It is coily. No magnetic fields will operate without a coil. Which of the alternating the car? Check the fan. The electric fan. All magnetic currents, electromagnetic, operate on a field. Check the speaker. All currents operate in a circle. Alternating current. We call it a circuit. A circuit comes from the word circle cycle. So because the hair is curly, it attracts more magnetic force, more electromagnetic field of force than the hair which is down. So you have your electromagnetic coils on your head. And you don't like it. You say that the head is this and that. I remember when I was, when I was small, I had lumps of hair on my head. And when they called me to commit, I said, cry. I said, cry. My father cut off all the lumps. My hair used to go in lumps, you know. You know what they used to call it? They used to call it dada hair. They used to call my hair dada hair. It used to go in lumps, lumps. They couldn't comb that. And they cut it. So they cut out my electromagnetic coil and therefore it decreases my sense of vibration to communicate with the most time, to communicate with nature, to communicate with the dogs. It decreases my dominion over all living things. So to say that man became a living soul, it's wrong. Man became a living being because the soul is always living. The soul never dies. So that whenever you're passing on to the other world, you give back the breath which was breathed into you. From when she comes, you shall return. Then you go on to the other world, or you go on a journey to the other world. So the English language has taught us to be looking at things in a very naughty way. Nancy story, fairy tales. The breath of life was given into man, the oxygen, and he became a living entity, a living being, a human being, not a soul. The soul comes like the gas of the car. Once you throw, when the car has no gas, it can't move. And once the car has gas, it's moving. Once you know how to start the car and everything. Gas, electricity, and so on. So that breath of life, what it did, it bounced the starter. Like when the current had to run through the starter for the car to move. And that's it. The gas is just, and once it bounces, start, uh, everything starts tumbling. The engine starts revolving up and down. It has to go up and down in order to make a complete cycle, right? Intake, pressure, and so on. Valve open, pressure comes in, and so on. And this is the reason for the soul. The soul lighted up man. The soul vibrated man to a higher level. So much that he could walk and talk and his spiny gland and baritary gland open out. The soul is the life force of the human body. 
that ignites the light in the, in the nervous system, in your chakras. That is why in 1970, when we had the Black Power Uprising, when black people started to ignite themselves to the soul, ignite their mind, they became conscious. We had such movements going around. We had such songs coming in. We started to do our way with the songs that, that were not really, they didn't have a soul. I'm a soul man. Soul food. Soul power. Psychedelic. Shock. The temptations. And we had a whole lot of songs. Michael Jackson was soul man. It is natural here, but since he changed and depleted his soul, that's what some of us do. We deplete ourselves to look like other people. We are the Afro, the soul dance, the soul food, the soul music, James Brown, Otis Redding, and a whole new set of people came on the scene that ignited the consciousness in us so that we can know ourselves. 1970, the opening of the seventh seal. In Trinidad and Tobago, there was an ignition also. With Makanda Daga and the Black Power Uprising, it was all over the world. But the negative forces decided to fight us. And they fought, and they fought, and they fought us. Today, you Bakayad. Many of you don't want to hear anything about Bob Marley. One love. Let's get together and feel all right. Buffalo Soldier. We don't want to understand about that again. You're going to dance and you stand up in a corner. You have no soul because you can't dance. You lost your soul because you come like a... When I say you lost your soul, not that you don't have soul, but your soul is be, be depleted. Your soul is, is dormant. It is sleeping. That is why they say, wake up, wake up, Africa. So my people... The breath of life was breathed into man and he became a living being. And let us not forget, as I've always seen that, that Bible, a lot of us have to, what we do, we read the Bible, we don't study the Bible and the words and the originality of it. We just read and follow. We believe, we don't know. We ain't supposed to ask for some, we only supposed to hear and believe. And we ain't supposed to know. Imagine in the Bible, it's, it says, God said, and let us make man. And let there be light. No, that is nonsense. If God is saying, let there be light, there is somebody other than God. There is somebody more powerful than God that has something in control. Because if I'm going down the road and my son has a torchlight and it's very dark and I say, son, let there be light. I am asking him to put on a light. I cannot say let there be light just like that. If there's nobody along, well, then I'm talking to another force and asking that force to allow light to take place. So for God to be asking another force to allow something to take place, that other force is more powerful than God. So why put let? Just put that there was light instead of putting let there be light. And let there be this and let there be that. Because the word let means to allow something to happen. If a man has a gun in his hand and, I, and he has people looking for people and I say let there be that. Well of course I'm telling the man to kill people. Because he has a gun, he's in control, he has the power. So when the Almighty says, let there be, the Almighty has no power. The Almighty has to rely on something to allow it to happen. Let there be light. So you see the nonsense that they put us to make us to believe and we don't study it. So my people, Umar Muhammad, Calypsonian disciple, the professor, the man scientist, 
until next month by the will of the Most High on the 11th of the 11th month 2021 we will be coming back and when I say we a lot of people don't understand that either we I am not alone Anuki Yabed bin Afashli I am not alone none of us is alone we cannot be alone because we have forces watching us we have forces looking at everything that we do that is why there's an Akashek or Akashai call the way pronounce it record everything has been recorded in some places they say you have an angel on the left an angel on the right and everything has been recorded There's a song that says God is watching us from a distance, but that's an nonsense. We have no distance with God to be watching any people from a distance. Because at the same time they tell you God is here, there, and everywhere, and then they come tell you God is watching us from a distance. What people could be so stupid? So if God was watching you from a distance, God is not here, there, and everywhere. The omnipotent Papa Oat is with us. We are never alone. Whether it be negative forces or positive forces, we are not alone. You have to make yourself what you come here to be. You have to make yourself a purpose. Life is a stage. We are the actors, and every one of us has a part of it. We are in a school. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. The treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the world. Umar Muhammad Khalid Sunan Isaiah will have a good day.